Welcome, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to See Me After Class, Teach First live post-show broadcast. I'm Alistair, this is Charlotte, and we're from Teach First. For the last six weeks, we've watched six Teach First teachers enter classrooms across London and begin their teaching career in front of the camera. Tonight, we're going to meet the teachers, find out more about their first year, and hear what they're up to now, one and a half years after the cameras started rolling. If Tough Young Teachers was the school day, think of this as your detention. So <laughs> shall we crank up the Bieber, stick out the chess set, and think about what we're all doing here? Now, no after show event would be complete without the people who have made it so watchable. We will be hearing from Nick and Charles a little later on, but for now, I am delighted to welcome Claudinia, Chloe, Meryl, and Oliver. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for being here um, and for joining us after what I'm sure has been a very long day at school, but almost half term, right? So, <laughs> great. Um, <laughs> so, as you know, uh, we have just watched episode six of Tough Young Teachers, and we, for the last six weeks, have been watching what I'm sure was one of the toughest years of all of your lives. Um, Oliver, I'm going to start with you. Hello. Hello. Um, <laughs> tell me, what was it like seeing a full year of teaching whittled down into just six hours of television? Yeah, thank you for your question. I think <laughs> it was quite it was quite scary the prospect of how are they going to pick out the, all the different moments. But it was a it really was a journey, and I have to say I was just thinking as I was watching the episode. Thank you all for joining us on our what was a very up and down uh, <laughs> journey, like a product life cycle, um, <laughs> ups and ups and downs. Um, it was it was a journey, and it, it did reflect our, our years. And I think it was a really accurate and quite a heartwarming portrayal of what is a challenging but incredibly rewarding job. Oh well, we've loved watching it. Thank you. Thank you, um, Chloe. I'm coming to you next. Um, so of course, when uh, during the series, you were in your second year. So you'd obviously completed that first tough year, although I'm sure the second year was difficult enough in <laughs> itself. Um, do you think it made it easier for you being on camera when you'd, you were already a little bit more confident in what you were doing? Yeah, I think it's definitely much easier in your second year. And so I felt more confident, I guess, about being on camera because I knew what I was doing a little bit more. I felt like I'd found myself in the classroom by that point. And so then it was just about having a camera come in and join me. There were going to be no surprises for me, I guess, but it was still an incredibly surreal <laughs> experience yeah. having them in there for a year. I'm sure. And uh, Claudinia, anyone's, um, anyone's first year in teaching is going to be tough enough. What made you decide to be part of a documentary that would mean that you would have cameras in there during that time? Um, okay, so for me, it was my mum who managed to convince me to allow the cameras into my classroom, um, which now, you know, seems like a really brave thing for me to do. But um, she just reminded me why I joined Teach First in the first place, um, which was to be a role model and to be someone who young people could see on a day-to-day -day basis. And she said, you know, if you allowed the cameras in, more people will be able to see that journey and hopefully see that young people are doing really inspirational things and hopefully they might also be inspired by what you're doing. So that's why I decided to let them in. <laughs> well, thank you, Claudinia's mum. And you, <laughs> as well, obviously. Uh, Meryl. Over to you, hello. Um, you all are, of course, but you are famous now. Um, <laughs> and you have, I don't know if you've seen it, you have quite the following, particularly on Twitter. Are you aware of your own personal hashtag? Uh, hashtag yes. Team Meryl? Hashtag Team Meryl, although I think it's also for Meryl Streep while she was uh, nominated <laughs> for the Oscars. I don't so think I think so. I'm quite that, that famous. Should we so grateful? <laughs> really I'm, I'm sure. sure. <laughs> um, have you been spotted in the street now that you're a celebrity? So I do live quite a boring life. I'm an NQT now. Um, so I do <laughs> just drive home and uh, they know who I am. And then I drive to school and, and they know who I am. So uh, I haven't been spotted as much as maybe some of the others. Um, <laughs> name dropping Oliver for sure. But uh, I have been spotted three times and it's been really nice when someone comes up to you and it's like, oh, you're Meryl from Tough Young Teachers. And like, you know, well done. Like it seemed really difficult, but we're really proud that you made it through. So uh, that's always been really nice. Oliver, when have you been spotted? Oh gosh, um, <laughs> I think it must be the glasses. It's uh, Buddy Holly lookalike season. Uh, I yeah, I, I, I was on a school trip yesterday to see Wicked at the theatre, and someone asked me if 
I would give them my autograph, um, <laughs> which kind of made me think about when I was uh, fighting for Lee Westwood's autograph at the U uh, US Open or the <laughs> British Open and the excitement. So uh, it's, it's strange. It's, uh, I don't think I'm going to be in heats um, <laughs> spotted <laughs> anytime soon. Uh, but it's, it's very surreal, as Chloe said. It's a, it's a very new experience. Might hide in the shadows. No. <laughs> It's good to see. I don't think you've let it go to your head, so that's good. <laughs> no, yeah, no, yeah. Um, great, now we're going to go to our audience. Um, we have a couple of questions. First, we're going to Amy. Hi, um, my question's for Claudinia. I'm joining Teach First this year, and I'm going to be teaching science, so I wondered if you had any advice for me. Okay, so for me, um, science was about making it fun as fun as possible. So if you can make anything explode or pop or bang, <laughs> <laughs> you might get a round of applause. Um, but also, um, science is around us everywhere. So trying to really um, bring that into the classroom and try and help your students relate to the subject more. That's my top tip. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Um, and now we're going to Kate. Hi, um, I'm Kate. My question is, um, what would you do differently if you did your first year again? Anyone. <laughs> uh, Oliver, do you want to take that first? Oh, um, <laughs> what would I do differently? Oh, gosh. Um, I think <laughs> there's, so stock, there's, there's so <laughs> many. Um, invest in more than one pair. Um, <laughs> I'd, I'd probably um, spend less time planning for what I was kind of doing at the front of the room and more thinking about uh, what they were doing. And so one big lesson I learned from the beginning I was like I thought oh I had to stand at the front and deliver a lesson but actually they learned so much more by experiencing learning and learning together so that was for me one of the, the biggest lessons I think if I'd learned that sooner at the beginning of the year uh, I'd probably spend less time um, planning and planning and planning and more time um, sleeping and sleeping, <laughs> and <laughs> sleeping. Uh, Chloe what about you looking back um, oh looking back I was just trying to think of a good one while he was thinking <laughs> while he was speaking um, I think if I could do my first year again I would I know everybody says it but I would be a million times more consistent I think mm -hmm. in your first year you want to try out so many different things and you, everyone's telling you and giving you different advice brilliant things that you can try but I think I would have like to have gone with my gut a bit more and thought actually I think this is going to work for me I just need to stick with it and eke it out a little bit longer to give it time to have that impact so I think kind of going with your gut feeling more because you've got so many wonderful people around you giving you amazing advice um, but you can't do everything so I think just going with my gut a bit more about what I felt was right and trying it out a bit longer and being more consistent with it is what I would have done. That's great thank you great question um, and now we have Emma. Uh, my question's for anyone really. Um, do you see yourself staying in teaching long term? And if so, or if not, why? How about you, Meryl? <laughs> um, <laughs> so I guess I, I mention it probably in every episode how much <laughs> I wanted to be a teacher. <laughs> so um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm very excited to, to still be teaching this year. And, um, <laughs> you know, obviously we'll want to keep doing this for as long as it, it feels right and I feel like I can make a difference. So hopefully that'll be a really long time. There's a good quote. <laughs> oh, here we go. Of course there is. A there's, a good there's a manifesto called the Holstein Manifesto that says, L I love what you do. If you love what you do, do it often. And I love my job. And so I have no plans to leave because I think if you love what you do, then there's absolutely no reason to leave. Great. Well put. I got that one right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll check it on Google later. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for all your questions. For those of you watching online, you'll have a chance to ask the teachers questions later on. If you want to ask them a question, go on to Twitter and tweet us at Teach First or go onto our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Teach First and post your question in the comments section. Now, let's go back to summer 2012. London had just held its best ever Olympic Games. We just had the wettest summer in 100 years. And Teach First's largest ever cohort, nearly 1,000 teachers, were starting their career around classrooms across the country. And for five of those teachers, and Chloe, <laughs> their every thought and their every class was going to be in front of the classroom. Now, one of the main reasons we at Teach First uh, supported this series was to inspire more people to choose a career in teaching, whether through Teach First or another training route. Someone else who wanted this documentary to inspire more people into teaching was one of its stars, Charles. 
Now, unfortunately, Charles can't be here with us tonight, but we spoke with him earlier this week, and I started by asking him what it was like to be teaching now the classroom was free from the cameras. Uh, I'd say a lot less pressure, a lot more time, um, but I think, I mean, I've enjoyed being part of the process of making the documentary and I think it's achieved a lot of the reasons why I went into it in terms of raising the profile of teaching, um, giving more publicity for Teach First, um, and I think just giving the public an idea of what it's like to be uh, learning how to teach in a school uh, like the Archbishop Lamb Frank School um, or Crown Woods or Harefield. Um, so yeah, it's it's been a it's been an exciting journey, um, but it kind of feels that it's the right time for it to finish. When looking back on uh, the series and, and watching what you were saying in the first episode as you were starting out, um, do you think it was naive going in, or would you say that your your reasons for for still teaching are are the same now as they were on day one? Yeah, I'd say my reasons are fairly similar um, in terms of giving further opportunities. Um, to all young people in education and in life and trying to um, provide the best education you can possibly provide um, to those children that you do teach. I think that re remains the same. Um, I think you do get more bogged down in the nitty gritty of school life but I think that's kind of, when I'm, when I'm asked why I'm doing it and why I'm still doing it, that would be the reason I'd give. Um, and so for, for those who will be watching here thinking this, this looks like the, the career for me, uh, what would you say to those who um, are, are looking to, to apply to be a teacher? Um, I'd say go and spend some time in schools and get a feel for what it's like, follow some teachers around and I think when you do that and if it is for you, you will get really excited about good teaching and seeing how a teacher is able to um, control a classroom and to lead learning and help students to make progress and when you see that being done well um, it's a very inspirational thing to see so I'd say get into schools and see for yourself firsthand whether this is something you want to pursue. Um, we just saw there from Charles his reasons for wanting to go into teaching. Now, Claudinia, tell me, what were your reasons for wanting to go into teaching? Um, I think I said it uh, in series one. As it was really, a, I was really conscious about um, wanting to be a role model. I think for myself, I knew a lot of people who had um, been affected by education. And for me, the effect that education could have on a life and it's just it can open so many doors so for me education is such an important thing um, it really has the power to to change your traje trajectory so to speak mm. so um, being a teacher allowed me to be in a position where I could hopefully inspire young people to know that they can and achieve achieve what they want to achieve what they're capable of achieving so it was about being present and being a role model mm. for me so it's so nice to still hear you speaking so passionately about <laughs> it now and you've yeah. been teaching now for well over a year so are your motivations still what they were? Definitely I think even more so now now that I can see the impact and hearing back from my students and seeing the difference on a day-to-day -day basis knowing that actually you know being there as a teacher every day is having an effect and impact in them so yeah. Good I'm so pleased. <laughs> now Oliver uh, let me ask you what was it about Teach First that appealed to you? Um, if I'm if I'm brutally honest, when I was applying, thinking about applying for jobs after university, I wanted to do something that was challenging and also rewarding. I thought back to experiences I'd had previously, teaching in English in Israel in a special needs school, teaching uh, music to autistic children for my Duke of Edinburgh um, award, where which were both incredibly rewarding experiences. So I looked at the Times 100 graduate programs and I looked at the list and I saw Teach First and I thought this looks really, really rewarding. I talked to my parents who are extremely supportive and and I thought this seems very similar to th something I'd done before and something that where I thought maybe I could actually make a difference as a graduate and not go down the um, route into accounting or law or business, where actually do something that has a real impact 
on lots of different people. And there was teach first. Well, we're definitely delighted that you did. Thanks for having me. Um, <laughs> 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 uh, now uh, we have a few questions from Twitter, which I'm going to ask you. Um, first, we have one from at Devon Savage, which is um, from the Summer Institute through your first year. What was the hardest thing that you faced? Um, let me ask Meryl that question. Um, gosh, that's such a tough question because there's so many things that you pick up and learn um, through the experience. I think um, looking back at episode six, one of the most difficult things to pick up on was uh, definitely remembering um, what it's like to, to work with a class and really get to know them and you really care for those kids and then it can turn around on results day. And um, it can be really difficult to see if a child has worked really hard and not made the grades. I remember looking back to my year 10 class and we'd only spent two weeks doing exam prep because we were mainly focusing on coursework and they'd done really well. And it was a bit hard at the end of the year then to see um, after those two weeks that some of them didn't quite make the grade for the exam, for the mock exam that they wanted. So um, it's about trying to pick them up, I guess, and say, look, guys, we only had two weeks this time around. We've got a whole year next year. So um, keep up the momentum, keep up the encouragement, and um, I know we can make it. Well, with your positivity, I'm sure they can do nothing but achieve. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> um, and now we have one from uh, Steve Smith, who says, uh, I am about to embark on the Leadership Development Programme with Teach First uh, this year. What one piece of advice would you give me following your experience? Who has a piece of advice that they'd like to give to Steve? Should we start with our expert? <laughs> <laughs> well, Is that why you are, Chloe? Go for it. Um, I would say to... My one piece of advice would be to just seek support from anyone that you can. Don't be afraid to ask for help from your colleagues, from your mentors, from your senior leadership team, from your Teach First tutors. Like Everyone is there to help you want to try and do your best. And I think sometimes you feel like you're going to be getting in their way by asking. But generally, I think people love giving advice. <laughs> it makes them feel good about themselves as well. <laughs> so, um, And you know, they're more than happy to give it. So I wouldn't be afraid to go and seek advice as soon as you need it. That would be my biggest piece of advice I that guess. Great advice. <laughs> great advice. Anybody else have a snippet they want to share? You could also, um, <laughs> I think, uh, I think in the whole, the whole series there's a lot about me saying oh I've never failed, I'm scared to fail and mm -hmm. fail, fail, fail. <laughs> um, but actually failure is great. Um, failure allows you to learn and don't see failure as an obstacle, see failure as a learning opportunity. Uh, and I think if you go in with that mentality uh, you can grow much faster and <coughs> and and you, yes it is overwhelming but uh, I think it's supposed to be because it is a new experience and, and just dive straight in and, and you'll see great results. That's really good advice. I also think you have enough material for your own little quotes book. <laughs> Maybe an on the side money making venture. Yeah, next to some bathrooms in the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, we have a last question from Facebook, uh, from Amiz, which is, it's a big one. Um, if you were given the opportunity to change one thing about the way the UK education system works, what change would you make? Uh, Chloe. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> you all looked like you didn't want that question, sorry. Oh, no. Good luck. Wow, I don't even know where to start. So if I could make one change to the education system, what change would I make? Um, oh my god, that's impossible. Mm -hmm. I I would want all the kind of services to be more integrated, I think, if that makes sense. What do so you mean by that? Oh, I don't really know what I mean. <laughs> so I mean, um, I would just want, so, I, so in the programme you see um, lovely, lovely Bruno, who I taught, and he lives such a tough little life, he lives in one room with his mum and his brother in one little bedroom with a shared bathroom with loads of other families. So they've obviously got some kind of external support looking after them, but the school wasn't aware of that. So it's very difficult for us to get a clear picture of what's always going on at home and therefore for me to realise that actually he doesn't have a safe place to do his homework and I could offer him that at school mm. if I kind of knew about that. So I think having those kind of integrated systems where, although obviously some things are very personal and should be kept private. I think being able to get a slightly wider picture of some of your students' lives so that everyone's communicating and you can offer them the best support that you can to help them achieve. I think had I known a bit more about his life, I would have been able to help him a bit more and maybe he wouldn't have got a U at the end and he would have remembered to come to his exam. Mm -hmm. So that There's would be so mine. There's always so much more going on, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. That was a hard question. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was a tough question for 
10, 15 at night, <laughs> wasn't it? Um, well, uh, there will be an opportunity to ask more questions later. So if you have some for our teachers, then tweet us at Teach First and we will come to those later on. As we all saw in Tough Young Teachers, teaching is tough, full of highs and lows that come thick and fast in the matter of a day, never mind a whole teaching year. And no one in that series saw that better than Meryl. Back in episode two, mm -hmm. we saw you put on cause for concern, but through hard work, determination, through the support of tutors, mentors, coaches from other teachers, but also your unshakable positive uh, thinking, which was incredible to watch. You made it through and you're now a qualified teacher. Yay, Yay Meryl. <laughs> so as you look back, firstly, was it tough to watch and remind yourself of, of what actually happened in that first year? Definitely. I think it was tough to go through it, but certainly <laughs> looking back, um, it was really tough to kind of relive um, those long, long days um, on cause for concern. But I think um, it's been really quite nice to look back in some ways at the same time because I have a lot of the same classes. I teach a lot of the same students and it's quite surreal to watch it back and, and be reminded yourself and have your students be reminded of just how far we've come together as a class. So um, it's nice to kind of see just how much, you know, we've all grown so much on this process. And I think anyone who does teach first grows so much over the two years. And um, I guess I'm quite blessed to just be able to see and be reminded just how far I've come. It was great that we were able to, to see that with you, but one of the concerns, I suppose, that uh, came from the audience was that you weren't actually getting the support that you needed to help you through that cause for concern. Could you give us a bit of a behind the scenes look? What, what did the support look like for you during that time? Of course, so um, I would want as much of the support that I had to be shown, um, but of course it was only six hours um, of footage. Um, I was really well supported um, by Teach First and by Canterbury, who are my university providers. Um, I had everything from behaviour management coaching sessions. I had um, a Teach First coach, which we call an LDO, who used to come in and support me. and was always on the end of a phone call if I needed anything, whether it's, you know, to just pour my heart out at like 11 o'clock at night. Um, we were really, really well supported. And um, I think especially seeing how difficult things got last year, extra support was put in when I needed it. And, um, you know, it really did help me to get out of those dark days. Mm. Well, we're so glad, everyone who was watching, that, that that was what happened. And you got through your cause from concern, came out of it, and you finished as qualified teacher. We saw it in the episode there. But run us through, how did that feel? Amazing. <laughs> did I mention that I'd always wanted to be a teacher? <laughs> so um, it, it really, up. it was like, uh, honestly, it rivaled like graduation or picking up like my A-level results or GCSE results. When you work so hard at something and you know, you really, really want it um, and then you get it, it's just the best feeling in the world. Amazing. We have a question for you from Twitter oh. uh, from at Chrissy underscore J, if you want to follow her then. Um, <laughs> why did you choose to do secondary? teaching, uh, would you ever consider primary? Okay, so I did consider primary. Um, when I wanted to go into teaching, I wasn't really sure about what age group I wanted to teach. Um, and uh, prior to going to university, I took a gap year and I worked in a tutoring centre in North West London for 14 months. And um, I taught, uh, I was an English tutor, and I taught English to five to 18 year olds. And um, throughout that process, I learned a lot about teaching and uh, what what I wanted to specialise in and I found that I definitely wanted to specialise in English and I would have the opportunity to do that in a secondary environment and also I guess as much as I love the primary kids um, I think I uh, felt that I was able to make more of a difference in secondary w with the secondary syllabus um, so yeah so I think secondary was the winning choice for me but I mean I think a lot of people have the perception that primary school uh, teaching is perhaps easier it really isn't a lot of my friends in primary I see how hard they work mm. and um, you know I salute anyone in primary education I can't imagine doing what they do my mother will be delighted <laughs> <they're> <laughs> saluting her right now um, as we saw throughout the series uh, one of your biggest sources of support was your little brother or distant cousin Nick <laughs> yes as we saw in tonight's episode Nick made the tough decision uh, to leave after his first year and he's now in France uh, with his wife while he can't be here tonight, he has sent us from all the way over in France a message. Let's watch what Nick has to say. Good evening, everybody. Um, uh, I hope you enjoyed episode four. Uh, it's not actually evening for me at the moment, but I know you'll be watching this in the evening. Uh, I'd like to just say a few things. The first is that 
uh, for me, leaving was one of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make, mainly because I loved what I was doing, um, and also just because it was a huge dilemma. Um, I'm now <clears throat> living in France and have been for six months now, and it was definitely the right decision for uh, my wife and I and the family that we're going to start building. Um, but I am sure, I am fully sure that I will be returning to education in some way, shape or form. Uh, so I've been asked to speak a, a bit about peer support and what I lived uh, with Merrill during that year. Uh, so that was something peer support was something that I think was absolutely essential. It's funny because we don't talk about it that much in the training in Teach First, but both Merrill and I, I don't think, couldn't have got through without each other. And why is that? Well, actually, funnily enough, teaching can be quite a lonely job, I think, because you spend a lot of time <clears throat> in your classroom. You arrive in the morning early, le plan lessons, teach all your lessons in your classroom. You know, you might get a reserve, but there's minimal interaction. At least that was how it was in our school. And then uh, the kids leave and you plan until late at night. And so you can actually find yourself spending very small amounts of time with other people. You know, there's the odd coffee in the staff room, but not enough to necessarily make friends and so Mara and I decided to uh, make the effort to mark and do stuff in each other's rooms and I have to say it was uh, <clears throat> it's not always easy because uh, you know you've got to bring a laptop there if you have one and uh, a computer you know you've got to connect to the network and everything so there was a bit of effort involved but I think it was something that got both of us through the year so for anyone who is going to teach first make it a real priority to make good friends with your other Teach First colleagues that are going into your school and make a real effort to keep up those friendships because those friends are going to keep you going in those hard moments. Um, yeah, so um, I wish you all the best and uh, thank you for all your support and goodbye and good night. Um, as we've just seen, and as Alistair was saying, one of the great friendships that we saw uh, building during the series was between Merrill and Nick. Um, but the support between all of you was obvious. Uh, Chloe, I'm coming to you now. Um, hopefully you won't mind me saying this. We saw you as kind of like the big sister of the group, <laughs> uh, the voice of experience. Um, how important do you think it is for trainee teachers to have more experienced teachers there to support them during that first year? Oh, I think it's the backbone of starting your teaching career. Um, going to observe other teachers, just being able to pour your heart out to other teachers who can then say yes, I think you're exactly the same thing as you, is the most comforting thing ever. And I remember when we all used to meet up for dinner and they'd be all like, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, I know exactly how you feel, I felt so sorry for them, but also so happy for them, <laughs> that they were about to come through this amazing thing and come through the other side and knew that they were going to love it in the end. But um, I think it's really, really important just to know that someone else has been through the same thing that you've been through. It's just the biggest source of comfort during your first year, that you're not alone in that sort of frightening little journey. Yeah, well, you could, you could certainly see when you guys were together that you were very sort of, it'll be OK, <laughs> I've been here, like you know. But yeah, I'm sure it provided a lot of support. Now, you've obviously finished your two years sort of on the Teach First Leadership Development Programme um, and we saw during episode six that you were having discussions about uh, perhaps taking on more responsibility at school. Can you tell us a bit more about what you're doing now? Uh, yes, yeah, so I stayed on to do a third year and I'm doing that at the moment and so I'm the key stage three curriculum area leader for geography which is really exciting so I've got a lot more kind of control over what's going on in our department which is really exciting and I work with my wonderful head of department and um, we've created quite an exciting little thing in the school. And um, I also mentor a first year Teach Firster, which is just lovely because he's ah. brilliant. And um, it's so rewarding to be able to see someone come through so brilliantly, just like I watch these guys do. Um, but to have a more hands-on role on it and to see him every day and to observe him. And it's brilliant for my development as a teacher as well. I think I learn from going and observing him and watching him. So it's an exciting year for me. It must be amazing to come full circle and suddenly be the mentor yeah. <laughs> when not so long ago you were oh, I still feel trainee. like I'm brand new as well, so <laughs> it's quite surreal. Oh, wow. Um, we have another question from Facebook from Alexandra who has asked, what have you found to be the most effective way of dealing with challenging students? Now, I'm sure all of you have had a fair level of experience of working with challenging students, but on Tough Young Teachers, uh, we obviously saw both Merrill and Claudinia particularly. Um, what's your method of, of dealing with those situations? 
Um, for me, throughout the year, I learned that actually being positive had such an impact in my classroom. So the moment I brought those crowns, it felt like my life with year eight changed. And <laughs> um, I was in Hobbycraft and uh, I saw them like blinging the, on the shelves like, year eight will absolutely love those. And they <laughs> really did. And, you know, they worked so hard just to get a crown. And then I realised it worked with year 11. <laughs> and, you know, just saying well done and praising them for actually really little things paid off. Um, and also with time, my students learned to trust me more. And as a result, we developed a relationship. Um, so behaviour just got better. So it, it comes with time and just learning how to adapt to each class really just helped. And how about you, Meryl? Um, so pretty much everything that Claudine has just said. Uh, <laughs> so I think all I can add is um, when in doubt, adjusting the bit of tension will always <laughs> put one straight and narrow. That would work on me. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Um, that's brilliant. Now, um, Claudinia, your teaching career quite literally started with a bang, uh, <laughs> with that infamous science lesson at the beginning. Yes. And then, of course, we saw you having a slightly more difficult time. Yeah. And then, at the end of the series, we saw you going to number 10 and meeting the Prime Minister and ending <laughs> on much more of a high. Yeah. Uh, is it possible to describe your, your first year in teaching as anything other than a roller coaster? I think that absolutely describes my year. I felt like I was always crying. <laughs> You know, it was either with joy and happiness or because I just, it was overwhelming. So you could literally go from one day feeling like you're on cloud nine to even the next minute feeling like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like what's going on? So it was massively such um, a journey for me. So ups and downs. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully more of a, a steady yeah. kind of merry-go-round now. Right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, second year massively, I think. It's just everything's a lot more constant. I really feel that I know what I'm doing. Um, I've got so much more control and confidence in my classroom. Um, so this year, is, it's like a whole new world. I really can't explain the leap between <laughs> what happens in the summer and then coming back in September. So it's been such a journey, I really feel. Um, that I've grown as a teacher, so it's great, actually, yeah. Good. Oh, well, we, loved, we loved watching that happen. I'm sure it's <laughs> exhausting, but still. Um, Oliver, uh, coming back to you. Um, in episode two, we saw you receiving some quite uh, difficult feedback, but then at the end of the series, we saw you finishing as outstanding, which you looked pretty happy about. I don't know. High five. Yeah, shall, shall we? I think, yeah. Um, <laughs> but seriously, was it worth all of the effort? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, it, uh, it's not just about me being outstanding. It's about me striving to be at a level where I'm giving great education to students and providing them with the best opportunities. Although you saw at the end that my chemistry class uh, didn't fare as well as expected, my GCSE class got 88% uh, A star to C, my uh, year 12 business class got uh, the same. And I'm just, it's just incredible to see huge progress made by young people and the kids are so, inspiring <laughs> seeing like <laughs> like a 15 year old word exponentially is yeah that was amazing is <laughs> especially that it's just i don't know what to say it's in, it's so inspiring so incredible so yes outstanding is great and yes as i was naive and wanting to succeed and wanted that label of outstanding it's more about it's more about the kids it's about them getting the best education absolutely we've seen and heard about the highlights of teaching how it can be full of such meaningful experiences and that's just one of the benefits of that makes teaching such a rewarding experience. But Teach First isn't just about getting people into teaching, it's about getting them to teach in the schools that need them the most to help solve the problem of unfairness in the education system. To talk to us more about this unfairness, we're joined by Joe from the recruitment team at Teach First. Joe, we talk about educational inequality a lot at Teach First, but what does that actually mean? Well, today in the UK, if you were to take two four-year-old children, the best indicator of how well they do at school um, is to look at how much money their parents have, and we don't think this is right, and we're really doing something about it. Um, one of the ways we try to tackle this issue is by placing inspirational uh, and passionate teachers into classrooms around the UK, like these guys here tonight. Um, it really is a national problem, and we're really trying to do something about it. So it sounds like we need to get more people into teaching. 
What do you look for when someone applies and, and puts in an application to be a teacher through Teach First? Um, well, we know from the show it takes a lot more than just academic credentials to make a great classroom leader. Um, that's why we uh, recruit against a number of competencies that can really help establish that connection between pupils and teachers. Um, things like humility, respect and empathy and obviously resilience. Um, also, um, just to add to that, sorry, we also really value experience. Um, what the show doesn't um, show you is basically that over a third of our participants um, have already been working and are not fresh graduates, um, and they bring with them a wealth of experience into the classroom, which we really value. So what if, for example, say I didn't work here, and I just watched the, <laughs> Teach First docu uh, the Tough Young Teachers documentary, and I thought, yes, that's it, that's what I want to do. How can I find out more? Um, I think your first port of call would be the website. There you can find out more about the charity, more about the uh, um, issue of educational disadvantage, and also register your interest and apply. Um, if you're at university, you can come and meet us on campus or come to one of our events. Basically, just get in touch and find out more. Brilliant. I'll pretend I don't work here and do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Thank you, uh, Joe and Alistair. Now, I think that's enough of our questions, although I would love to continue. Um, now it's over to you. For the last few days, you have been sending your questions via Facebook and Twitter for our teachers. And we're going to go through as many of those as we can now. Would you like to come and join okay. me for this, Alison? Okay. Um, the first question you're going to ask. Oh, thank you. First question is from I'm Not the Doctor, love it, from Twitter. <laughs> how have your teachers, your own teachers, shaped your approach to the classroom and how much comes from yourself? Oliver, I'm sure we could share some many stories from our. Yes, Alistair and I went to the same school. Um, <laughs> oh gosh, nice. To do very well, justice. Um, for me, my business studies teacher uh, when I was at school was just incredibly passionate about not just business but also teaching and uh, being a teacher and he just had exuded, uh, exuded this just passion for, for his subject which is for me is a massive, was a massive lesson if you're passionate about what you do in the classroom the kids become passionate too so for me it's a chain reaction uh, it has a massive effect and I went to the school a few months ago to, to visit him and it was, it was the same, you know, s seven, eight years later he's still in the classroom, he's still extremely passionate, I still see seeing kids in the classroom who are excited to learn and for me that was a massive inspiration. What were you Chloe, is there, a, do you think, was it all you, do you remember someone who you saw in your, in your school days and thought actually I'd quite like to, to be like that? So, well, when I was at school, I had the loveliest, calmest, sweetest geography teacher. And I just remember sitting in her room and just feeling so calm. And it was so lovely. And I thought, I want to be like that. I want to be this calm person at the front of a room that makes everyone feel safe. And um, so I think she was probably the biggest influence on my teaching. But then I also remember having, I had a chemistry teacher who just had so much passion for his subject and had this beautiful clarity when he explained things. And he was the only person I could understand chemistry with. I remember thinking, please let me have Mr. Marsh next year, please, because otherwise I won't understand. And it's from, yeah, he just made the subject come alive and he was so zany and he'd wave his hands around everywhere. <laughs> and he was just great. So yeah, those two, I think just being calm, but also very passionate about your subject had quite a big influence on how I taught or do teach. Great, well, our next question um, from Facebook is from Ashish Patel, um, who has said, how would you sum up in one sentence just the one sentence. Um, your experience from the day of your assessment centre at Teach First to now. It's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> Oliver, you are quotes man. Hit me. I think, I think, I think I grew four inches. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, one sentence. I'm not good at shortness of speech. Uh, an incredible journey of love passion, <laughs> joy, friendship, <laughs> and um, toilet poetry. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, Meryl, what would your sentence be? Um, how do you follow that? Um, <laughs> oh, it's so cliche, but the most rewarding thing you'll ever do, mm. and, oh no, why did I say and? <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I'm, a sh I'm a short person. It's the most I've ever grown. Oh, but that in the book that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, we have uh, another question from uh, Twitter. 
H2O Neon. My Twitter handle is really boring. The, those people have much more interesting <laughs> names. Um, how has your being on television affected the way your classes act? We've seen how you guys have, have obviously uh, you know, enjoyed the limelight. Um, <laughs> but but how, have you, how have your classes been? Um, I'll just quickly say, a lot of my students from last year, who I still have this year, have been really, really sweet since the documentary's come out and have said things like, you know, oh, madam, why don't you tell us that, you know, you were getting in so much trouble, like, no teacher could have handled that class. We would have behaved if you told us you were going to be fired. And I thought, yeah, <laughs> right, guys. Like, I'm going to say, oh, guys, are going to be fired. Please behave. They would have, you know, I'm sure, <laughs> played our people more. But um, they have been really sweet, and uh, we've come so far, and it's just really nice to see that, you know, they did care back then, um, and they do mm -hmm. care now. Can I share? Yes. Um, I just find this quite funny. Yesterday, a student, so sweet, came up to me that I didn't ever have never taught before and said, was it difficult learning the script? <laughs> 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 Which I thought was uh, very sweet. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> it was very difficult. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was. It was. Um, and yeah, the kids are really, really supportive. They, they shared the journey with us. Uh, the students that we taught, so it was never really a surprise. They were just kind of seeing what they, how they how they act. And my students are have been remarkably well well behaved um, in last year and and this year. So um, a few go to the toilet, sir. Uh, but apart <laughs> from that, um, it's it's been really positive, very positive, and it's a positive show. So it should be good. Well, we uh, we have a question now about that. Uh, famous first lesson that you'll, you'll remember so well, um, from Facebook, from Rachel Edwards, who has said, if you, could, if you could go back to your first ever lesson, what, if anything, would you, would you do differently and why? Uh, Claudine, we were talking about your first lesson a while ago. Is there anything you would change about that lesson? Not scream when the balloons go off. <laughs> <laughs> I think that added to the drama. Anticipation, honestly, my heart was going, was like, why is it not the first thing? <laughs> But um, no, um, I practiced that lesson for like a whole day before, so I felt really prepared for it. So um, for me, it was just about making my students as comfortable as possible, because they, that was their first day. Mm -hmm. So I could see how scared they were. So um, it was a new experience for the both of us. Um, so I would just say, be prepared, practice as much as you can, and it should be fine. You might get a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we had time to ask more questions. Thank you so much to everyone on Twitter and Facebook who've given us uh, your questions. But some of us have school in the morning, so we're going to have to round up there. Can we give our teachers uh, a round of applause, not only for tonight um, and not only for the last six weeks, but for the last 18 months that they gave up to let us into their lives. So let's thank our teachers. <laughs> everybody in the audience for coming along tonight. Thank you for watching online. If you do want to find out more about Teach First, go to teachfirst.org.uk or follow us at Teach First on Twitter. But for now, from all of us here, good night. Good night. At first, it was an adventure. The start of my mission at the heart of the system, where you get a chance to listen, advance in vision, learn your task and life's ambitions so you can make the right decision. When I was 15, school felt oppressive. And this one maths teacher was a manic depressive, a victim of sleep and a passive aggressive. He'd rather me at his class than in his lesson. And that was it. No more maths for me. Spiralling out of control in the hope to feel free. Bunking one lesson turned into most a week, you see. A classroom is a classroom where thriving minds come to expand and grow, where seeds get sown. But from all walks of life, these feet have grown. Some get beat, some get treats at home. Some might see the right path, some might need to be shown. Some teachers see the signs, some just don't. Some show their care inside, some just won't.
A true teacher provides their students' lives with hope, doesn't undermine or make you feel alone, doesn't clip your wings before you've flown. A true teacher looks you in the eye and says, find your dreams and fly. Cares, actually wants to share their time. It's so much more than just a nine to five. You're guiding lives. I can't just short for I can try. Teamwork makes the dream work comes to mind. Now that's worth an underline. The best teacher I ever had showed me the magic in life. Made me grateful that I got eyes and hands to write. Helped me find my innocence in a young corrupted mind. Highlighted the demons in gun crime. Made me happy, brought me sunshine. It's mad. How one word, one line can change somebody's whole life.